Hey guys, hopefully a quick one for you today. Um, earlier in the week in Kevin Gary's Inner Circle, there was a post about accessibility and touch points for small things like these social media icons. And the gist was that really we need to set a minimum touch point size by adding some padding around the icon um, so that on smaller devices, uh, you can actually touch it with your finger quite easily. Um, and it's a bit of an accessibility concern as well as just a usability concern. Because sometimes what happens if you put these small icons on the screen, you go to a mobile or a tablet, and it's just really, really hard to touch them because they're just too small. The touch point area is too small. Um, I've seen Google Search Console complain about that. Uh, also, those wave accessibility reports, um, they will also complain about it if they're too small. Uh, and this is just a smart way of doing it. Not my idea, but um, this is how I've implemented it. So looking at this here, what I've got is a template. I'm going to actually delete that template and show you how this works. Add a template widget. There's my template widget there. I'm going to call it socials. And I'm going to select my social template, which I'll show you shortly. Okay, there's my socials template there. Now, if I want to change the size of these, by default, I'm using ACSS, by the way. So by default, I'm using a text size uh, L by default. And I've got some modifiers here, which I'll explain shortly as well. So social icons, if I want it to be medium, I just roll my mouse over there, and you can see it's gone to a smaller size, which means the default is L. And medium, small, XL, XXL. And you can see with the L, medium, S, and XL, they're all taking up the same space. So it's not taking up more or less space. If I look at the, if I leave it on L, I'll just go to the, the front end here and have a look at that. And you can see that the padding around these icons, and by the way, I need to fix this up because I'm using a Font Awesome uh, icon here. Um, and when I've looked at the sizing, because it's a font, the sizing is actually based on its height, not its width. So I've got to change that a little bit uh, in my code. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, a, it's semantic because there's only a small difference anyway. If I look at the DOM and I look at that if I, if I font icon there, it's 40.1 wide, 44 high. Right? Now, if I come back to here and I change that to be small, so the small icons, and save that. And then I've got my small icons there, but it's still 44 high, 42 wide. Right? So the touch point size didn't change, the icon did. And this is the point that you can make the icon small, but they still have to be clickable on a touch device. And that's the whole concept there. So I'm going to show you how I've actually achieved this. So that's the what we're doing. Now, how do we do it? All right, so firstly, I showed you that we just insert a template and then insert a, uh, and then set the size uh, using a modifier. Go back to the actual template. This is the social icons template. So I've got a very simple, I've got a div, which I've called social icons. I've got a wrapper inside that, so I can use that to, uh, you know, either be horizontal or vertical icons, um, just with a flex alignment. Oh, and uh, then I've got here, which I'm probably going to change Shortly, I've just got icons under here. The reason I'm going to change that was I realized is that if I change that to be a UL, I can't change these to be an LI uh, because they're icons. So uh, I have to fix that up uh, later. I'm going to put these inside divs as well. So for the moment, we just uh, leave it as not being a list, a semantic list, just being straight out uh, divs. Okay, so we've got the wrapper there. We've got a Facebook icon here which is, again, it's just a fun, awesome brands uh, Facebook icon. Uh, in reality, I'd probably change these to be SVG, so I'm not loading the entire fun, awesome brands just for these, uh, but this is just for a blueprint uh, to get us started. Okay, and you'll see here that I've got my link is a Metabox um, token. If we look at my Metabox, I've got my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. as test.com on those just so I can show them when I go live you just take out the ones you don't want and set them to what you want them to be this is just so we can see them there all right so going back to our social icons 
So what we do is we use the token to display the link. Then we also, on the conditionals, which will be on a div above this once I sort this out, we use the same token with a not equal to nothing, which means that it's going to hide this entire icon if we haven't set a link. That's really, really simple. All we have is we either set links or we don't, and then these will either display if there's a link and they won't display if there isn't one. Really simple, right? Okay, so that's just a display of these. Now, the important part here is the actual CSS at the top level here. And if we have a look at the CSS there, what we have is uh, my, my typical way of working where I create uh, CSS scope variables. And on this one, the ones that we're actually going to look at are these two here, which is the icon size and the link min width, which is a incorrect wording at the moment because I'm using a font. So the actual size is set on its uh, height, not on its width. Um, so that's an incorrect wording. Don't worry about that. The point is we want to say we want a minimum touch width, effectively, of 44 pixels. In this case, it's going to be height because of the font. Okay, so what we're saying is that our icon size is text L, which is an ACSS variable for my text large as my default. Now, when we change that to a smaller font, we still want the touch point to be this 44 pixels here or greater if we decide to change that. So the way we do that is we create, create a padding variable. We're going to calculate our link min width minus our actual icon size set up here. And we're going to divide that by two. The reason we divide by two is because this is going to go on left, right, top, and bottom. So we don't want to double that. We want to actually halve it. So we can put half on the top, half on the bottom, half on the left, half on the right. Okay, and we set our line height to one so we don't get any extra weird spacing out of display to flex. And on our wrapper, get rid of all of our gap, all of our columns, just in case it's been set uh, through the UI. And we're going to just set a flex direction. So if we have that as column, then our icons will be in a column. We have it as a row. We have our icons in a row. Okay. And then the magic happens here on the actual icon. Uh, we're going to set our padding to a calculated value, which is basically making it the actual size of the icon plus enough padding to make it as big enough for our touch point. Uh, and then our font size, obviously, of our icon. Um, again, I'm using fonts uh, with Font Awesome. If this is an SVG, you might want to change this to be widths and or min widths or whatever you use. Okay, so uh, that's really the whole concept of it. Now, what we need to do now is we need to, to have modifiers. We need to target these from above, which is a little bit different to normal BIM. So in BIM, we've got our block here, and then we'd normally create modifiers, which we add to that or add to some of the sub elements in that or in that uh, block. But because we're going to use this as a template, we can't do that. So we have to do this a little bit differently. So what we do is we're going to target these from above. How do we do that? Let's have a look at this uh, back to our footer here. Where we're using these social icons. And what you'll see is if I go in here to the to the classes and I type social, I've already created all these modifiers. I've got social action, social black, social neutral. You can see these changing as I hover over them. Primary, secondary, and then I've got some sizes. So the default was L, so that doesn't do anything. M makes it smaller. S makes it really small. XL makes it big. XXL makes it really big. Right? So how do we do that? Let's have a look at the M modifier. So the social icons M modifier. We look at the CSS. And all we're doing is from our root, which is our template, okay, which has got the social icons M on it. So the root is going to be the social icons dash dash size M. So that's the root. And then we're going to look at directly under that our social icons, which will be the template that's underneath there. Okay. So this up here is called social icons. It's our template. So we want to target from the top down with our modifier. And then we're going to set our icon size there. Okay, simple, right? Now, the only other one we've changed is the, if I go back here to social icons, we have social icons in this XXL, and have a look at that one. What I've done on that one, I target the icon size to text XXL, but also set our link min width to 55. 
The reason I did that is because the XXL is already bigger than 44 pixels. So we wanted to have some padding around it. So that is the absolute minimum size that we will allow this touch point to be. And that is it. That is how we create a social set of social icons uh, where we can have some use them as a template, has some modifiers above the template, and it all works beautifully and everybody's happy. So I hope you like this uh, and it makes sense. If it does, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Uh, if you've got any comments, please let me know. Thank you guys.